Hey, what's up guys? This is Anthony from Anthony's Customs, and for this review, we are looking at the new Marvel Legends Shatterstar figure, which is one that I have to tell you I am very excited about. I've wanted a Shatterstar in this outfit for forever, and now we got one, so I'm super happy. I heard a lot of people say, what do we need Shatterstar for? We don't need him, especially in this look, but I disagree. I love this look for him, and I'm very happy to have it. So let's go ahead and get him off the stand and take a closer look. This guy stands just about 18 centimeters to the top of his ponytail, which makes him about 17 centimeters to the top of his head. So that's about six and a half to the top of his head, closer to seven to the top of his hair. So pretty much standard size. We've seen almost all of these parts before, whether they were in Bucky Cap or uh, Doctor Strange or various other guys. I think the boots might be new. I want to say we've seen those gloves before, maybe on a Star-Lord figure? I don't know, maybe not, but the hands are definitely old, so most of the, the main body is reused, but I think that's fine because this is a, a good example of how to reuse parts properly. They mixed in just enough new stuff to make it look like its own figure, so I'm very happy about that. We do have a couple accessories, though they have no paint at all, and they're kind of, kind of kitty moldish. They're not, they don't have the most detail in the molds. I don't know, there's something off about them, but uh, they still look nice. We have the sword with one blade, and then we have the same sword, but with two blades. They're fine. They're not, they're not bad. They just, there's something about them that reminds me of like the old 90s figures that don't have any detail in their accessories, but they're still okay. And then this guy, as I mentioned, there are some new things. We have this nice shoulder pad. We have a belt, which we might have seen this belt before, but I can't quite place it if we have, so it doesn't matter. It's just a belt with pouches, so that's good. This is new. And then, of course, we have the new head and the, and the scarf that's connected to the shoulder pad, so that's all good. As far as paint goes, mostly this guy's a, a success, even though he doesn't have really that much paint on him because they molded all of the white plastic white. It's not painted, so that's great. Painting white is not a good idea. They seem to have learned their lesson, at least mostly, so this is all molded and it's all very clean, so that's nice. The black lines are painted. Could be cleaner. I have to say, uh, if you're going to paint black on white, it should be fairly clean. and It's not terrible. It'll definitely do. Uh, I don't know. It's okay. To be honest, I, th I remember it being a gray color for the stripe. I might just be remembering incorrectly. Black might be fine, but either way, it looks good. And it matches nicely with his logo up here, which is really nicely done with the silver outline and then the black star. Very, very clean paint job. Uh, the belt has this marbly plastic, or there's a wash on it. I still can't quite tell. It looks like marbled plastic to me, but I don't know. Same thing for the headgear and the shoulder pad. And they painted the buckle on the belt, which is very nice. They did a good job with that, so I'm happy. Unfortunately, they didn't paint any of the buttons or straps, but or um, clasps, I guess is the right word. But it's still it's good that they painted the main buckle. They did do a little bit of paint work on the boots, and that's pretty clean, so that's nice. And then the paint work for the face is... Not bad. They did a decent job with that eye right there. His regular eye is okay. And then his hair has either that marbly plastic or a wash in it. I still, I, I don't know for sure. I'm going to have to try to confirm that one way or another. But uh, as of now, I can't quite tell. Plus, most washes are more like an ink, and they end up soaking into the material, so you can't quite tell anyway, so it doesn't really matter. But they did paint the little hairband back here, so that's good. One thing I'll point out is that his face, the sculpt, is definitely weird. I'm thinking it's a, it, it's a problem from the molding process, but it looks to me, at least on this particular figure, that this, his left eye, the one on the right here, is sunken in. It's a little bit weird like that. And then on this cheekbone, it's definitely carved away as if this is supposed to fit in there, but it's not the right shape at all, so it doesn't key in at all. So it's, it's a little weird looking, but it is kind of hidden underneath that headgear, so it's not the biggest deal. The hair sculpt is nice, though. I really like the sculpt on this shoulder pad. I like that they have the little wrinkly part in there, so that's nice. And then the scarf looks pretty good, too. They did a good job with that. So overall, it's very aesthetically pleasing. It definitely takes me right back to the 90s looking at this design. I love it. As far as articulation goes, we have our standard hinge in the neck, so it can look up and down pretty well. Full rotation, a little bit of rocking back and forth. I don't know, I think it sits pretty well on the neck, and it's pretty well hidden by the scarf and shoulder pad anyway, so that's good. These little hair guys are soft material, so they won't get in the way at all. Shoulder pad is very soft, and it's just connected to the scarf, so it really won't get in the way at all. We have our standard ball hinge shoulder, which comes out all the way horizontally. You can rotate it all the way around, and... Like I said, the shoulder pad won't actually get in the way, but it will for some poses, of course. Can't really do anything about that. Bicep swivel is fine. Double jointed elbow could be better due to that glove being in the way, but it's not too bad. Can the glove rotate? 
Uh, no, it doesn't seem to want to rotate. You can rotate the hands though, we've seen these hands before. We have our hinge in there, this is our standard Bucky hand. And this is also our standard Bucky hand. They did not change anything, we still have a trigger finger on this side, but I guess we can live with a trigger finger. It's not the worst case of uh, reusing the wrong part. For the ab crunch, it does go back one notch, but it's totally not sculpted up there. It looks a little bit weird, it's flat right in there. But uh, otherwise, it's, it, it looks okay. If they had just kind of rounded that out, it'd look way better, but they didn't. And then it goes back at least, yeah, it looks or forward just one notch again, which isn't the worst in the world. It's okay. And it actually looks better on the back than on the front, so that's interesting. Uh, we do, of course, have our waist twist, which is fine. And the belt is a soft floating piece, so you can push, push that up and hide the seam for the waist twist, so that's good. For the hips, they go all the way forward. That's really nice. They go a little bit back, so that's pretty good. Give you some options. Bringing the legs out to the side, not too bad. A little bit better than 45. And then we have our thigh swivels, so that's good. This piece is just a floating piece, and it loves to fall off. So you probably want to just glue that on there. There's really no need for that to move around. It's just a matter of how they put it together. So I'd throw a little bit of glue on there carefully and then slide it into place. And that'll, that'll help that problem. For your double jointed knee, we have no problem at all. I do wish they would have continued the paint. I mean, that's something I do when I'm customizing. They could have easily, easily done that. Just continue the paint down right along that little seam for the joint and it would have looked way nicer. But it's not there, so it's not, a, not the biggest deal. If you wanted to, you could easily do that yourself. That's totally up to you, though. Uh, for the uh, boot, we do get a, a rotation up here. This one's kind of stuck. This one works a little bit better. Uh, you guys know that's not my favorite articulation in the world because it's really not a real thing, but it does afford better range of motion for the ankles, and since he does have the boot, it doesn't kill the sculpt, so you can use that ankle rocker that throws the foot off at an angle, and then just rotate the boot to bring that foot square again, so that is pretty nice. And then as far as rotating the foot or hinging the foot back, it works really well. And going forward, if you force it, I think you can get some range, some extra range. Let's see. Eh, it doesn't really want to go. So it's very limited going forward. Ultimately, it, it's not a perfect figure. I mean, there are some flaws, but it's still a really nice one. It's definitely got that shelf appeal, and it, it's not too bad. The flaws are pretty minor, so I think you'll like it. I like it a whole bunch. And I think you should probably get one. So there you go, guys. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. I have new videos up every single day. We talk about action figures, movies, TV shows, video games. We do unboxings. All kinds of fun stuff. So make sure you turn on notifications so you don't miss any of that. Give the video a thumbs up if you liked it. And in the meantime, keep collecting.